it is 2 o'clock. Um, my name is Emily Levinson, and I am uh, addicted to Twitter. I also have um, multiple personalities, as you're going to learn. Uh, and I do come from a social work background, so I can technically diagnose myself as having multiple personality disorder. Uh, because I am, I really do have about five personas that I tweet from, and all are very different and very specific. Uh, so I, I kind of joked when I was titling this, I was going to put kind of all my credentials up and go in with the definition of what multiple personality disorder is and how everybody's crazy. Uh, because sometimes I really do feel that way, like I really am multiple different people. And I never know how to introduce myself because I never know who follows what and which one to say. Uh, so it does get a little tricky. But um, I do think that there's a lot of benefits to having very specific niche identities. Uh, and that's really what this is going to cover today is talking about kind of what the benefits are, what the cons are. If you're not quite sure if it's right for you, we'll talk about kind of the pros and the cons of it. Uh, and then just talk about some tools to help make it possible because uh, if you're going to be tweeting from more than one account, if you're going to be writing different things, there are a lot of things that you can do to kind of streamline yourself and your time so that it's not becoming your entire life. Uh, having, you know, for two, even two different feeds or two different kind of themes that you want to go with. So uh, that's kind of what I would like to cover today. And if you have any questions, any comments, any feedback, please I'm very informal. Interrupt me as much as you want. This is really for you to help because I'm already doing it. Uh, so, you know, I can sit up here and talk about it all day, but I want to make it valuable for you also. Yes? Which Twitter account do you want us to use right now? Whichever one you want. And in fact, this is who I am. So if you want to know what my personas are, this is me. See? Right? I don't think I have super so that it means if you don't know who I am and other things, or if you don't know that I'm the same person, it means I'm actually doing it really well, right? Because you're not getting confused that I'm a vegetarian, that I'm a crafter, that I am one of the organizers for the craft collective, that I am also a health coach. But if you don't know all those things about me in one persona, then maybe I'm doing something right by keeping them separate. Um, so I do, I, my friend Sarah introduces me at several uh, because I just have so many and she doesn't really feel like <laughs> wanting to introduce all of my different Twitter handles, so I'm just at several to her. Uh, but my main one and the one that I really kind of show most of my personality in is Subu Inc., and that's my crafting business. Um, reluctant Vegetarian was born out of a blog that I started because I am reluctantly a vegetarian. My husband wanted to be, and I call him the hubster, wanted to be a vegetarian. I did not, and I was pissed, so I started a blog. Uh, and then I started a Twitter account, and you'd be really surprised how many people want to know what you're eating every day. Uh, that happens to be the most popular handle that I have, and I have um, close to 4,000 people following me on that one for doing almost nothing, uh, except talking about, I'm having a smoothie today. Um, so it's really interesting, but because it says vegetarian in the title, I get a lot of people looking for vegetarians to follow, and it's helped kind of skyrocket that blog from something where it was just me being annoyed with my husband wanting to be a vegetarian to now being something that I truly enjoy doing. And I love you, honey. I do enjoy being a vegetarian now. Um, so it, it's just something that's kind of kept that. And for a very long time, I did not ever associate the two that I would never cross promote. I would never say who I was or what I was doing because in the beginning, I really wanted to be anonymous with the vegetarian one. So most people probably don't know that one. Um, or that it connects to me. Uh, my newest business is health coaching and it's sustained health and wellness. And that one really is about the events that I'm doing with my health coaching business and what, um, you know, different articles. It's linked to my website for the health coaching. So it's very focused on just being that. Um, and I will admit that I have a hard time sometimes with the vegetarian blog and the health coaching because to me they overlap a little bit. And so it's, I have a harder time separating those two, and I don't necessarily want to. But um, because one's business-focused and one's a very niche blog-focused, then that's um, for me. And then I'm also the main um, person who does the blog and the Twitter for the Craft Collective, the Pittsburgh Craft Collective, which is PGH Craft. Um, and we also have a separate blog uh, for the Crafts and Apps show that we do every year uh, that we set up this year. So that added not just one, but two blogs to the Craft Collective. Uh, so this is who I am. This is why I'm qualified to talk about it, because I clearly do have several identities uh, that sometimes make me feel really scattered and sometimes make me feel like, ooh, I know where I can tweet this today. Or I have a lot to say and I don't want to inundate people in one feed so I can split it over five. 
Uh, so, you know, I'm a very verbose person. It allows me to kind of split that up and not torture people in one feed. Um, questions on that so far? No? Okay. All right. So this is what I do. I have five Twitter feeds, five blogs. I have two websites that I manage because I also have a website that's just my name. And while I don't do much on it, it does funnel people into the different projects. Uh, so it is upkeep. I have two Facebook pages, one for my book business and one for my health coaching, and then I have one Etsy shop that I manage. So as you can imagine, it does end up being a whole lot of typing. I spend a lot of time on my phone, yes? Do you also have a personal Facebook? I do. Oh, yeah. So then, well, so then, I yes, I have a personal Facebook page. Um, so I have a whole lot <laughs> of social media things happening. Um, and I do have time to do other things, although some might disagree on a different day. But um, there's a lot that you can do with it and a lot of ways that you can um, kind of put yourself out there and have them work for you so that they're all kind of functioning together. Because I certainly don't spend time doing every single one individually every day. It, otherwise, I'd be doing it for 10 hours. So there are a lot of ways that you can streamline it for yourself and, and have each, um, each service work for you. Well, with Facebook, your blog, Twitter, and everything else. All right. Uh, do, does anybody in the room have multiple identities already? Ooh, about half. So the rest are looking to start with other identities? Yes, you're looking to start? Okay. Yeah, or try to split the business from personal. Ah, yes. Splitting business and personal. Okay. Um, one of the, some of the benefits of having multiple identities, if you're kind of on the fence about it or if you're kind of needing to remind yourself why you're doing it, if it seems like it's getting a little cumbersome, it really helps you create a niche um, in doing it. If I were to post about the crafts that I'm making, about the food that I'm eating, about the health coaching that I'm doing... I probably have maybe five people in the world that are going to be interested in the same things that I'm interested in as a whole kind of identity, so if I were to do that. But if I separate out my crafting business, there are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people who are interested in craft. You split out the food, and there are at least 4,000 people uh, you know, that are following me. There are millions on Twitter that care about food, that are foodies, food bloggers, vegetarians, people that are interested in that kind of lifestyle. Um, if you're looking at health coaching, again, it's a very specific group of people that are interested in all of those things. And while I might be able to reach, you know, a core with being it all as one person, I'm certainly not going to be able to reach the amount of people that I have been able to by splitting them up. Um, and, and I'll use the veggie one as an example. For Reluctant Veggie, it is close to 4,000 people. I don't tweet on that as much as I used to, but to not do anything and to get followers strictly because it's about vegetarianism is amazing to be able to get your market that focused so that you know exactly who you're kind of getting to come to you. And then when I post stuff, I have a lot of people that are interested and are going to write back because that's what they care about. So you really are able to kind of hone in on a niche very easily and be able to kind of target uh, who you're trying to connect with in an, easy, uh, in an easy way. It also makes it easier to follow. I follow people who are crafters, veg. I mean, like I've kind of found a couple people and when it gets a little too much or they're talking about so many things that are across the board, I don't even know what they're about or why I'm following them anymore because there might have been a specific reason in the beginning and then I lose that focus or lose track of why and I'm more likely to unfollow them uh, or not stay connected because it's so far all over the place that it makes it really confusing to your audience. Um, another pro is that it allows you to hook more prospective followers, and I kind of touched on it, but being specific, knowing who your niche is, you're, it's going to allow you to get a lot more people interested very quickly because they know what you are uh, and what you're about. Um, and then again, it's about the separation of personal and business, and you know, talking about do you post personal things in a business account, I would argue and say, no, you shouldn't. It's about your business. It's important to put your personality into your business, but it shouldn't be about personal things if you're trying to promote you and use it as a marketing tool for your business. Uh, that's my take on it, which is also why I have five different Twitter feeds. Yes? Um, I'm a sex toy reviewer, and uh, I am wondering what your opinion is. Hang on. Yeah. 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 I feel like I sort of have to my personal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's different being putting your personality
personality in it and putting yourself into it because you know people are connecting to your business because of you. But it's different to then talk about, because you're doing reviews on sex toys, to then talk about your life in other ways. It might not make so much sense to people who are really just interested in, uh, you know, learning about the sex toy and is it good, is it one that they should look into, versus you talking about what you had for dinner and where you're going tomorrow or what movie you want to go see, because that doesn't relate to your business. That is very personal, even though sharing your personality and telling your story, I see it as being different. Does that make sense? Yeah, some of them, some people I follow do do that. They talk about where they want to eat. So I'm like, I don't care. Right. I just want to do three things with you. Right. So if you think about it in that way, put your personality into it. Infuse who you are because that's part of why your business is what it is. But it's different to post about personal things than it is to put your personality into it. That's kind of the distinction. Yes? Do you keep them completely separate or do you uh, link between your sites? Um, I started to, but for about the first six months, I refused to because I didn't want it to confuse people and I didn't want them to question who I was and what I was writing about. So for the first six months that I had the reluctant veggie, tw I would never tweet about what I'm, you know, if I'm going to a craft show, I wouldn't tweet it from there. And I still hesitate doing that, um, but then I look at it and say, well, I have 4,000 people that are looking there, but again, they're not following me for that same reason. So I really try not to overlap. Where the health coaching business and the food, yes, I do because it is related to what I'm talking about and the food blog was what led me to the health coaching. So I do feel like it's more appropriate in that way, but I still hesitate doing it because I don't want to confuse people as to who I am and what business I'm talking about, what blog it is, because it is so specific. But you, do you link like all the blogs together just so there's even a link that they, the other ones exist? Um, I put them on my blogs, I put a badge. That'll say, I also blog at, or you can also find me here, and then I'll put a graphic that has the craft blog, that has the health coaching. Um, if you go to reluctantveggie.com, it'll be, it'll be a good example of how I'm kind of cross-promoting myself, because I have an about page, and then I have an also me page. So I am explicitly saying, that's, okay. here's who I am also, but I did not do that for the first six months to a year that I had that blog, because I... I I honestly was keeping it anonymous on purpose, or as much as I could. I wasn't intentionally hiding my identity, but I wasn't also purposely saying who I was. Uh, but I've now kind of um, talked about it, and I've brought it out a little bit more into the public. I've said, this is me. These are also my tweets, uh, particularly since I've been doing the, um, you know, doing this presentation. I've linked and promoted on every single Twitter account that I'm doing this. Here are my other personalities, um, you know, to be talking about them today. Uh, so I do some overlap more now, but I, I intentionally keep them separate because I, there aren't many people who are going to want to know uh, about each thing, and I think they follow um, each one for a different reason, so I don't want to confuse people. Does that answer your question? Yeah. No, I, mean, I was just concerned because I, I know I'm separating mine, but I want people to still know it's me and me. Yes. One of the others. yes, and there's a. I mean, you can put, if you're putting your name on something, um, you can also put in your bio or your about that you are also this. If you want to hear about personal tweets or if you want to know more about me as a person, here's where you can follow me. If you want to know more about the business, I mean, there are ways that you can link them all together, and it, I would encourage you to do that if that's something that's um, you know if that's part of what you want to do. If you want to keep it separate, there's nothing that says you have to disclose who you are. Um, and. You know, and, and two, I think, you know, for if it's a business, if you read something by, say, Coca-Cola, would you want to read about the person who's writing from Coca-Cola, or do you want to hear about the company? So think about it in those terms. If you were a big brand, would you be doing the same things? Would you be wanting to put that personal information? Yes, it's important to get your point across and to get who you are and your personality, but sharing personal information doesn't always make sense. And you have to really think about, is this right for the business that I'm doing it or for this kind of purpose of this niche? Does it make sense to, to kind of put that in there? Or if it doesn't, you know, be very careful or cho you know, choose what you're putting in there and be intentional about what you're doing. All right, some of the cons. And this is what I generally get when I tell people or the jaw drops and people kind of get the crickets like, why are you doing all of this? You don't get paid for it. Why are you doing this again? Um, it can be very time consuming. And so you have to be smart about what you're doing and we'll get there, but it can be time consuming. For people who are having trouble kind of posting to one thing, to have to post to now two or three, it, gets to, it can be overwhelming. 
Um, it can also be annoying to the person doing it, where if you are posting to five different Twitter feeds, who am I today? What am I doing today? Uh, it can kind of get into, um, you know, just that confusion of, why am I doing this again? <laughs> Remind me why I thought this was a good idea in the beginning. Um, and it does get hard to keep track of everything. So sometimes I'll forget that I'm in the veggie one and I'll post about something that has nothing to do with food and I'll get somebody saying, you're posting from the wrong one today. <laughs> Damn. Um, which has happened. Uh, so, you know, being aware of where it's coming from. Um, and I also do on some days really start to feel very scattered. There are times when I almost wish that I could bring everything together and just be me in one thing. Uh, and then there are days where I'm like, no, this makes no sense. Nobody's going to care. And if they do, I'll have five people instead of, you know, kind of bridging as much as I can. So um, the day, it just depends on the day. But most of the time I don't feel scattered. But there are days where it does get to be like that because I have a lot of things going on in every different kind of facet of my life. Uh, and then the other complaint or the con is that people are worried that they're going to uh, run out of things to talk about. I can honestly tell you I don't have that problem. So I'm not quite sure uh, who would have this, but there are people who just don't know what to say. Um, I do think, though, having a niche and being very um, precise about what you're writing about will help you have more things to say and to kind of be able to put that into words or to kind of put that out there more because you know, hey, I'm posting about food. This relates. And so it's easier to generate ideas knowing what your niche is. But some people say, I don't have enough for one Twitter feed. How am I going to fill three or two or whatever else it is? But again, you know, you're guessing I don't have that problem. Um, anybody else kind of have concerns about multiple identities or are struggling with it in their own way? What kind of web application are you using to keep track of everything easily? Um, I use a couple and I'll get there because I have a whole thing on tools. <laughs> um, but I, and if I don't answer your question, bring it back up. Anyone else have questions? Yes. I just want to add a comment. Um, if you run out of things to talk about, um, you can always retweet something else that's in that right field for whatever account you're on. And that's sometimes a great way to get yes. something to talk about today and you just, you know, share. Yeah, and there are days uh, where I'll have a question of the day, and I'll just post question of the day. What are your thoughts on tapioca pudding? And I'll get 50 responses back, and it sparks a whole conversation. And a lot of times it's fodder then for me to blog about it because I now have this great chat or this whole idea or concept about what people think on certain things. So, um, I, you know, if you if you haven't tried something like that already and you, you want to kind of get something going with your, with your followers, try asking a question of the day. It's actually a really fun way to get people going back and forth, but make it relevant to what you're talking about. So if you're doing sex toys, you could ask people what's your favorite sex toy. You know, what are things that you've tried that you like? What are things that you don't like? What's been the biggest waste of money for you? Um, and, you know, kind of generate some of those things to get that conversation and dialogue going. And it can, you know, then you don't have to say anything except respond saying, ooh, that's a great point, or thanks for sharing that. Uh, and it generates a lot of interest, and, and usually it generates more followers because people see this conversation going, they want to get in on it, they want to respond, and then they start to see that you're talking about those things too. But, yeah, that's a great point. Any other comments or thoughts? Yes. I just, because I... I had it up, so I just started following a couple of your, the, the veggie one and mm -hmm. the life coach one. And um, I, I kind of like that you also, like when you have something that kind of bridges both, you um, you either just repeat it or retweet yourself. That's kind of <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, it's really funny because I'll look at my Twitter and my at replies and I, I'm the one who's like tweeting my own stuff most. Um, <laughs> Which, it cracks me up that it's like, ooh, I'm tweeting myself. This is kind of a good day. I'm having a whole conversation with myself today. Uh, and then I wonder and think, am I really crazy? Like, yeah, it's you know, really cool because it, it yeah. directs people to your your other presence yes. as well. Because I have two different presences, but they're both sort of dance-related. Um, one's more of a fitness angle and one's more of a theatrical angle. Right. But... There are people who would probably be interested in both, but only follow one. And, right. You know, kind of bridging the two. And if there is an overlap, I think it's I think it's okay to do it. I think though, I have a 
And I've done it once or twice just to get drum up interest in things, but I wouldn't really post a lot about I'm doing a craft show in this city, come find me on a veggie, on the veggie one, because it really doesn't relate. I might write about a restaurant that I've gone to in Chicago, if that's where I am, because that relates to food, but I wouldn't say I'm here because I'm here for this, this, and this, and follow me on this one. Um, because it just, I think it's kind of, you know, it's like, follow me, follow me, look at me, here I am. And that's not the point of doing it. It's really about kind of that niche area. So it, it's, I, don't, I hesitate, but when it relates, I think it's okay to do it. Yeah. As long as it's relating. Because you would tweet somebody else who's doing it. Why not just tweet yourself? That makes sense. All right. Any other comments? You guys are awesome. All right. So how do you develop your persona? Um, if you don't have one or if you're looking to really kind of hone in on the personas that you do have, it's really important to kind of sit down and really focus on what you're trying to accomplish with each one. What is the goal of each feed? Because you wouldn't be setting it up and having different ones if you didn't have a goal to it. Uh, you know, your personal one, it might just be to talk to people, and that's fine. But if you are trying to set something up for fly fishing, what is your goal for it? Are you really wanting to talk about technique for fly fishing? Are you wanting to talk about great locations? Do you want to talk about fly fishing in Pittsburgh? Um, you know, what are you trying to accomplish with it? What is your goal by setting up that feed? Because if you don't know what it is or why you're wanting to do it, it's going to get lost and you're really not going to stick with it either. Um, it's also important to kind of know the why behind it. Why are you doing it? Why do you think it's important for you to have two separate ones? Particularly if it's personal to business, why do you think it's important to separate it? Why do you, why do you want to kind of break it apart instead of keeping it together? Uh, because it's going to add more time and work to do it, so why do you want to do it? Um, also thinking about who your target market is. Um, you know, for, for my target market, for the reluctant veggie, it is vegetarians it doesn't, and, and foodies. So it doesn't matter if people aren't necessarily cooking vegetarian or eating a vegetarian lifestyle. One of the reasons, um, and you know, my target market was food bloggers. I wanted to connect with them because they were blogging about food. I'm blogging about food, it just happens to be vegetarian. Um, and I wanted recipe ideas, and I could tweak recipes, and sometimes regular food bloggers post vegetarian recipes. So I wanted to connect there, but I also saw that other vegetarians were my target market, as well as people who were maybe on the fence and weren't sure if they wanted to do it or not. So I got real clear real fast about who was I trying to target and who was I wanting to follow, you know, so that I could kind of get the information and the connections between the people that I wanted. Um, also, how often do you want to connect? And it's okay not to do it every day. It really is. And if people tell you you have to be online every day, it's, it's crazy. There's just nothing that says you have to be. That's really crazy. Having multiple identities, not so crazy. Um, but, you know, if you want to blog once a week, great. As long as you're consistently doing something or every Wednesday you go to your Twitter feed and you tweet all day on Wednesdays, people are going to start to know to look for you on Wednesdays and they're going to start to pay attention to what you're doing. So consistency about it and really being clear, how much time do I have to give to this, when do I want to do it, and how can I kind of put that together. So really coming up with a plan to develop your persona is important. And then really deciding, is this a personal <coughs> feed, is this business related, and really getting clear about what the two are. Um, again, it's not about sharing your personality, but it's really about kind of, is this a personal one just for me? That's just about what I'm doing and it happens to kind of overlap everything? Or is this more about kind of a business and branding and really kind of getting into that piece of it? Questions about this? Comments? Does this sound clear? I mean, is this what you're already doing? Is this sort of a review? No. Has anyone taken the time to really kind of sit down and think about what they're doing? Yeah. Well, I made a chart, you know, with which one is a target market and which... Twitter account follows which blog and which Twitter account follows which membership site. So I've got the chart, but you know, even looking at the chart can be overwhelming. <laughs> right. So any little techniques to make it easier Check. are great. Um, and it is, there are some good tools. I don't know if it's. Um, I'll get to the tools. I'll skip ahead. Um, some of the tools that help to manage all of those things, I use Hootsuite, and if people were in that talk today, I love Hootsuite. It is something that made my life 
so much easier because it really helps to track everything. And in Hootsuite, I can do one tweet and I can hit from three or four different accounts to write it to in one go. And I don't have to, I don't have to switch between. I don't have to go back and forth. I don't have to retype something. It's one thing. You click three accounts, you post it. So it really, it, and if it, if it doesn't matter to you what you're doing or if you're retweeting something and you want to retweet it from three different accounts, you just click them off and you send it. Um, that has actually saved an immense amount of time because I was using Twitter on the Twitter webpage. And that is so, I mean, there are so many other tools out there that can help you do it. That If it's not Hootsuite, there are plenty of others that you can use. I just happen to like that one because that was the first one I tried. I'm like a reluctant tweeter and like, I hate it. Um, and I, I hope that I come to love it because I have to do it. I hate it. <laughs> um, so I just got tweet there. Uh -huh. um, is tweet deck better than or worse than? Honestly, I've never tried it, um, so I can't, I don't know. It's, it's roughly the same. <laughs> they're, they're like, un unless you have a particular super preference, like I really like black, so uh, you know, Twitter, like that, that one's better, tweet deck is like, but for the, their fundamental feature set is mostly identical. So I could they're tweet the both. same, like to three different tweet account, Twitter accounts from tweet deck or from the tweet deck. You know, I believe tweet deck yeah. does still tweet. The main difference is the one is desktop based and the other is browser based. So Which one? Tweet type is, tweet type is still on the browser based. Is it? Okay, I didn't know that. Whenever I use it, it's a desktop. Yeah, Hootsuite is web based, um, which for me worked because I actually started all of this when I had a day job. Um, and this wasn't my day job. Uh, so I needed something that I wasn't allowed to download any program to my computer at work. So for me, it was really important to have one that was web based, so Hootsuite was perfect for me. Um, where TweetDeck, you had to download the software to run it, and I, I couldn't legitimately do it on my computer. So um, for me, that one worked. Uh, but, you know, play around with them and, and look into what it is. And I'll tell you, if you don't like tweeting, if you don't like Twitter, you're probably not following the right people. You're, you're probably not finding the people that interest you and make it fun for you. Uh, because I've had friends who have said, it's boring. Well, who are you following? You know, there's so many interesting, wonderful, funny, snarky uh, people. There are a lot of people who talk about sex toys. I follow a couple of them, and they are hilarious. So if you're not enjoying it, there's, you're probably not finding the right people. I think all the whiny ones. Maybe. Because <laughs> <laughs> also talk about our food, and I'm like, I don't care about what you're eating. You're supposed to be a sex toy reviewer. Yes. There's also a pattern. I've seen this happen with me and have with a couple other people I talk to where you try it, Hated for about a six month incubation period. <laughs> and after about six months, all of a sudden one day you log in and you're like, this is awesome. <laughs> and that literally happens to me and about three or four of my different friends whenever they had their first experience with Twitter, there was definitely like a six month chunk of time where it was just it was really bad and all of a sudden it like clicked somehow. It's overwhelming, like there's yeah. like the hashes and the RTs yeah. and stuff, and sometimes I'm like, what is Yeah. What well, well, you know do you know what they are now? Yeah, a okay. little bit. I mean I I don't I'm not attached to it yet, but I do at least kind of understand it. Yeah, but but part of that recommend, I mean, really play around with who you're following because if you're not if you're not interested in what they're saying, you're not following the right people for you because there are millions of people on Twitter. You should be able to find somebody that you like to watch and listen to and read what they're talking about and what they're doing. And there was a, I purged a lot of my people because they were boring as hell and I had nothing in common with them and. It, it wasn't doing anything for me and it wasn't adding to my experience and I wasn't able to add to anything online because I didn't have anything to say to people. And if that's the case, I, and I did, I, I started over, I looked for new people, I got, I purged a lot of my list and then went back and found people that really did interest me in what I was kind of tapping into. Um, what I do is if I find someone really interesting, then I look and see who they're following. And then I follow who they're, because I'm like, well, if I like this person and they're interesting, then I'm going to see who they're following and then follow their you know, yeah. and that will help you find people that you like. Okay. I've never used it actually. Twitter. I did like one test tweet, and I came. That's part of the reason I came here this weekend. Yeah. I never understood the purpose of why you want to use it, and I still I don't know about following people. But to me, the big use that's got me on it that I want to hop onto it now is for people to be able to follow me and in my and stuff I write, especially for my business. Uh huh. I mean, I see that as a big thing. Me, I don't know. Just following other people, I can't see. What well, Twitter is all about building a relationship and putting the time in and really what can you do for somebody else it's not twitter isn't about what can people do for you it's about what you can do for somebody else 
How can you add to the conversation? How can you give useful kind of tidbits, information? How can you share a story and build that relationship and that conversation? Where if all you're wanting to do is post about the business, maybe Facebook is better. Well, in no, having, I'm thinking I want to yeah. podcast. I want to help people. I want to right, tell right, people. Right, I right. don't want to read other people's things. I don't want to... You know. Well, but you have to read other people's things to help them. How no, else do no, you know, know how to respond? Movies, but, but I'm just saying, you know, like, the, yeah. I've seen it as the conversation about what someone's going to eat, or yeah. like, there's one uh, Darren Fireball, I believe it's a blog I love to read, but his tweet feed is all about baseball games. And, you know, and it's, it's just in the text stuff, and I'm like, I could care less about baseball, and, you know, I. Just, yeah. No. But but I think it's important. You can do searches on Twitter. For, you can type in a keyword. You can look under hashtags if you that because they're trending topics. And so if somebody's tagging something as say like the PCPGH five, the PodCamp one. You can see everybody who attended PodCamp and start connecting with people that way. And it just gives you kind of to follow the conversation and see who's talking about what. So it, it can be a helpful tool. Um, but it, the idea of following who people follow, I love doing that because I also find a lot of Pittsburgh people that I never knew about that I really am invested in connecting with people in Pittsburgh because that means a lot to me. Um, so being able to follow who other Pittsburghers follow, I love it. And that's really how I started to build my kind of follower, who I follow and who I kind of talk to. And if somebody's having a good conversation, I'll look at who they're talking to and then I'll start to follow them. So it really does start to build. Yes. I, I like fell in love with it by way of the search. In fact, there was a search called Some Eyes at first. They bought it. It's yeah. Search.twitter.com. The, the simplicity of just going to the search pane, where it gives you the trending topics. You can either one, you know, often it's the timeliness of something like Iran, you know, uprising that tunes you in, where you you find yourself obsessed with the search field. Mm-hmm. So you're following people, and that's where the hashtags start to make sense, and also the way that they court. Because I looked at, you know, when I looked at the original timeline, I, I, it seemed like too much of an investment to care about all the little things, the RTs and the pound size. It just didn't make sense. But from the search perspective, which truly is a great discovery medium, and looking at those trending topics there, it's a simple way to start to see stuff start to fall together. Mm-hmm. Search.twitter.com, it sort of simplifies things. So before you even start following people, if you got nobody, or you think you have no one to listen to, it's just interesting to, to go there. And so do you follow topics instead of like yes. from the search field? But you're not from a regular from the regular do you follow you can have okay. search people searches essentially. Okay. Isn't the, there's a search function there, I just always forget yeah. that search is just what's the sign. What's the, the one that I brought the Twitter fall? Twitter fall, where can't you put in the topic, the hashtag, and then you just watch everything that yeah. goes by yeah. it? Yeah. You can you okay. in Hootsuite. Yeah. In Hootsuite, you can actually add a column that is whatever the trending topic or the search term that you want, and every time it's mentioned, it'll come up into your feed. So you can just follow. So if, for I'm picking on you because you're the only one that talked. But if it's if you do like a hashtag sex toys, you could put a whole column of what that is, and then see whoever is chatting about it, and then start to have conversations with them. You don't have to follow somebody to respond to them, and you can kind of see that feed coming through. So it really can help. And if you are clear about what your niche is, you can put that in a search tag, create a whole column for it, and then start to kind of get into the conversation that way. Um, one thing I will add, though, because one of my accounts is locked and one is public, locked accounts will not show up in hashtag searches. And a lot of times, if you want to respond to somebody and yeah. they don't follow you in your locked, they can't always right. see it. So just something to keep in mind. And uh, wefollow.com is also a, a good site to enter in different interests and in yes. industries, businesses, and find people that way. Yes, agreed. Did you have something? Well, I was, I was going to add, um, I have a couple where I picked who I wanted to follow. And so I'm very interested in them because I picked them because they were talking about things I want to know about. And by the way, I do not know how I would have found Mashable and Chris Brogan if I wasn't doing that. How, how would I have found them otherwise? Yeah except following somebody that I like what they said, so I went to see who they follow, yeah. and found the people that, that, that I like what they said too, and that's who I picked. But I bought a blog, and the Twitter site that went with it came with it. <coughs> and I pulled that up, and I looked at what's there. I don't even want to be there. Just like what you're saying, mm-hmm. because I didn't choose them. Mm-hmm. So I'm sort of ignoring that, and, and I'm, I'm simply concentrating on broadcasting good information for the target market. Mm-hmm. And not that a lot of people are following it, but I don't care much about it. Mm-hmm. But on the others, boy, is it different. And I chose them. Okay. I wish I could spend more time reading them. Do you ever go to the library and you wish you had three hours for magazines instead of one? And that's, you know, something. Yeah. Yeah.
Too bad Chris Brogan didn't come this year. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, I'm going to jump back to brand integrity, and then we'll get back to the tools because it, there are more. Um, but that was just kind of one to talk about. Um, for brand integrity, if you look at the big kind of businesses that are on there, they have the same logos, they have the same images, they have kind of everything connected together where you should probably, if you're kind of having all of these different identities, for whatever your true one is, for my Reluctant Veggie Blog, I have the same avatar on every single site. If I post a comment anywhere using it, it shows up as that face with the, the lettuce in the mouth. People are associating that image with my feed. And I've had people write me on Twitter to say, hey, we saw your face in the paper. Do you know people are using your image? And I thought, well, it's okay, they're allowed to. <laughs> you know, it's one of those, it's not my actual face. Um, but people recognize that in other cities, other people, I've never met them before, and they are saying back to me, hey, you were in the paper. I thought of you. That, that's what you want to start to get. You want people to have your kind of logo, your image popping up everywhere so that people recognize who you are. They'll know you on Facebook. They'll know you on Twitter. They'll recognize you in every single arena that you're in so that, the, so that you're building that kind of trust and that kind of continuity across all your different sites. Particularly if you're managing, you know, Facebook, Twitter, uh, you have a blog. You want the look on every single one of them to be the same so that you're not confusing people. Wait, is this the same veggie? Is this the same thing? Yes. One, one place I found that very, very, very useful about it was Gravatar. And, and setting up an avatar to set up yes. that or another one. Because then my picture now shows up on my website. And yes. see that, you know, iPhone everywhere. Yeah. And there are a lot of different tools. You can get widgets to do it. But, you know, for your, if you're doing Twitter, customize your background. Customize the colors. Make it look like your blog. Make it look like all of the avenues around you so that you're maintaining the same brand everywhere you are. Because that's going to start to get people to recognize you and, and kind of notice who you are, where you are. I have people come up to me at craft shows who say, oh my gosh, I've seen your logo everywhere. I've seen it on Twitter. I recognize you. That's how I know who you are. Thinking, oh, all right, well, I guess I did well. <laughs> uh, you know, that, but, but it's kind of cool to have people say that to you, but that's what you want. You want to start to develop it and have that kind of integrity across, across the different functions with it. Um, again, it's important to stay true to your mission. So when you are putting together your plan, um, what is your mission, the what, the why, all of those pieces of um, kind of why you're doing this, why you want to make it together, stay true to that mission and don't stray from it. And it, because it just, it really just confuses people and you don't want that. Um, visual branding, again, is as important as the content branding. So you do want to have the same kind of word message, but you also want to have that same visual message to what you're doing. <coughs> And then we were kind of talking about this, but connect with other like-minded individuals. Seek out the people who, um, who are interested in the same things that you are. And the reality is you're only as good as the people you follow. And if you want to be something different, follow different people. Get a different conversation going. Start to go into kind of different areas and use the people that you're following as a way to shape that. You were saying you weren't happy with the people that you were kind of in the one that you bought. Change it. Purge them. Get rid of them and follow other people. Um, you know, get that conversation back into a place where it connects to you because when you connect with what you're talking about, who you're talking to, it makes a world of difference. Um, you know, and, and when I purged, it was like this amazing feeling of, I like who I'm following now. I like what, and I wanted to be back on Twitter and I wanted to get that conversation going again. Just it'll take me a little while with 2,000 people to figure out who I really want. Yeah, there's a tool, I can't remember what it is, you go to the website. There's, there's one called Unfucking Follow. <laughs> okay, that's not the one I was thinking of. <laughs> Twit cleaner, maybe? Yeah. I don't know. Like, you can look and see like, who's following you and if you're following them and to help you determine. Yeah, I need Twit Cleaner. Twit Cleaner, I think. What's it called? Twit Cleaner, <laughs> I think. You could also probably just do a search for cleaning out followers. Yeah, they drop because it's technically against the terms of service, so the tools get, like, their keys revoked. Uh, you're, not, you're not allowed to automatically unfollow people. Uh, but somebody online says friendorfollow.com. I've, I've seen that. Yeah, you're not allowed to programmatically unfollow. I can follow all the people that just I don't understand that. It happens. I actually unfollowed everyone I was following for a while because I got to big problem management. So yeah. Any questions about brand integrity? Is this something that you guys have focused on already or have thought about? Yes, no, no. Yeah. I think it's hard for small business owners or independents to, to think about that. I'm glad you had that page in there. Um, I happen to have had 20 years in corporate with Pepsi, so brand is right yes. on the top of the list. But 
you, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned it. I mean, your face with the lettuce becomes a brand. Everybody knows the Target brand. You don't have to, you don't have to say the word. Yeah. If you see it, you already know what it is. It's important. Yes, it is. And just think, when I first showed you who I was, I included those pictures in there, and that was probably the first thing that you looked at, was what the icon was, not what the name was, but the icon, because that's what you associate. You're looking for those things in your Twitter feed, you're looking at it, you're looking at it, you know, in every area. Pepsi wouldn't change their logo without seriously considering the ramifications, and it probably takes them 10 years to get to that point because they're going over every minute detail. It all matters. And it matters in small businesses. It matters even if it's a blog. It makes a difference. And when you start to change things, even if you're updating it, like I changed the reluctant veggie blog, I kept the same exact color scheme even though I changed what it looked like. Well, that was something I was going to mention because I, I've worked at marketing companies for a long time. And for a brand, it's not just the image. It's the colors. It's yes. the fonts. Yes. The sizes you use of the fonts. And that is, those are all things you should think about before you start your brand or when you're rebranding. Yeah. And make sure you have them and make sure you're consistent. You know, don't switch the font from one page to another. You know, pick what you use as a headline font and what you use as a body font. And, and don't use a different one on your Facebook page yes. your blog. Yeah. Keeping it, you want to keep it cohesive across every single channel you're using. Uh, because, again, that's how people are going to recognize you. And yes, they're going to come for the content, but if they think it's a different blog or a different from the Twitter, and the one you were talking about where the Twitter feed was talking about very different things than why you were following the blog or why you liked reading it, there's no brand integrity there. You know, that's a personal Twitter feed that isn't related to the business, but it's using that name to get the followers. Well, just on the blog, he started talking about tweets all the time. Yeah. And, and so I was like, well, then I guess I should go look at it. But, you know, he mentioned baseball maybe one post out of, like, 40. Yes. On the blog, but apparently on the Twitter feed during a baseball game. <laughs> every, it's every 30 seconds. Yeah, and it's confusing, and it makes you not want to follow him, and, and kind of makes you annoyed with the blog because you're now starting to get annoyed with the person. So it's really important to think about, you know, keep it, you want everything to really kind of step in line with all of your goals in every single aspect, Twitter, Facebook, blog, all of those things should be going towards the same mission with what you're doing. And that will help you kind of manage the different identities because you're not confusing them. It's keeping them very specific and separate. And if you want to post about baseball, maybe you should make that your personal one instead of connect it to a tech blog because it doesn't make sense to be posting about that. Just like somebody who posts about fly fishing isn't going to post about financial planning, it doesn't make sense. And the people who are interested in fly fishing probably aren't interested in financial planning. Um, you know, it's just going to confuse people. So you really want to be aware of how you're kind of talking about it and keeping everything with that mission. It's so important to have that. And in the beginning, I didn't really think about it and thought, well, who cares? It's just Twitter or it's just this. But it's not because I've gotten more business from Twitter and from blogging online for my craft business. It actually is my marketing plan. So to have to put that together, you know, it's really important to use it because for most people, I don't really have a big budget for marketing, if any. And so for me, this is my marketing and this is what I do. It's a time commitment, but it's not a monetary commitment, but it leads to sales. It leads to exposure. It leads to people recognizing who I am thinking about me, referring friends to me, it really makes a huge difference in the way that my business operates because I'm able to use it across different platforms. So don't, I mean, don't take it lightly. If you're a small business, this is probably the best way you can use to market what you're doing and to get people interested in what it is. So don't underestimate it. It's, it's probably more powerful than you realize in, in all of the different avenues. Other comments? Tools. Um, Hootsuite we talked about. Um, Uber Twitter, for those of you who have Blackberries, I don't know if it's on any other medium. I had a Blackberry and I loved Uber Twitter. Um, I just switched to a different phone and have kind of gotten into Tweetcaster. There's also Seismic. There are a ton of different ones. But you want to make sure that whatever platform you're using for a phone, for the computer, if you're doing it that way, has the capability to add multiple accounts because they don't all do it. And if you have multiple identities, this is like the key feature because this will save you so much time to be able just to bounce back and forth really easily with the push of a button instead of having to log out, log back in, and really kind of operate in a different way. So explore the different tools. These are just a couple of them. I'm sure there's, there are hundreds that I'm missing that I know nothing about. It's kind of the tip of the iceberg with it. Um, Another thing that I do because I have five blogs that I write to and I try to write almost daily is I schedule posts. I absolutely spend an hour and a half, 
one day, crank out five posts for the week, schedule them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I'm done, and there's an hour of my time. If, I'm, if I were to sit down every morning and blog, I would be spending an hour to two hours on one post instead of just, I'm in the mode, I'm writing on, this is what I'm doing. And I'll try to kind of get everything together uh, so that I can do it for, you know, the, the craft one or the food one, but I have everything that I need together and just crank it out for the week. It will save a lot of time, particularly if you're trying to write for multiple different blogs or if you have a lot of things going on. I frankly don't have enough time during the week. I have enough maybe for one day to set aside the time, and that's what I do. I schedule them out, and then they go up. Um, granted, if there's something that I forgot or that I want to post about, of course I'm going to add something else in there, and I can reschedule or push one of the posts back a day or two. But it's a really nice feeling to have a week's worth of blog posts done in one day and then not have to worry about it, and it frees up your time to do other things. So I would encourage you, if it's possible, to do that or to be able to at least get content as often as you want it, even if it's once a week, that you can sit down and schedule them out so that you're not kind of spinning your wheels every day or, you know, wasting time trying to do something where you can get it done at once. Sticking to a routine, if you know that you sit down every Sunday and blog and that's your time to do it, it'll, it'll make it easier for you to get back into that habit and sit down every Sunday and do it. And it'll keep you consistent, it'll keep you honest with it so that you're able to consistently generate content for what you're trying to do. Um, Twitter's a little different. Uh, I know you, in Hootsuite, you can schedule tweets. I, I don't do that because for me, it's just kind of a flow of consciousness thing um, that I do. Or it's kind of So for me, that's the instant response. Or for, for, for blogging, it's something that is more thought out and scheduled to me. Um, Facebook, I have my blog imported into it. So I, I link all of my blogs in there, and I have them come up as notes. On my, on my uh, craft fan page, I have a craft blog coming in as notes. People comment, there's conversation that goes on in there. Um, I do the same thing for my health and wellness one where I'm having people, it just automatically posts to Facebook every time I, I have a post, comes up in the notes. Um, it doesn't come up as link, but it actually comes up as a note in Facebook. Um, for Twitter, I do the same thing where I use, um, all of my blogs are hosted on WordPress. Uh, there's a WP to Twitter um, plugin that you can get that automatically sends whenever you update a post, um, whenever you post one, if you update one, if you put a page up, it will send it to Twitter automatically. So it's already kind of connected and working together. So I'm not having to do it seven times, which really would be a big pain in the butt. Um, so the more that you can automate things and generate content and use them to work together, and kind of feed people into the different areas, the more you're gonna be able to kind of make the most out of those different things and have them working together so that you have that brand integrity also, that you're kind of constantly generating and linking and really promoting yourself without having to do a ton of work. Um, because again, if it's overwhelming, that you know, it's generally one of the cons, you can do a lot of things to make it very easy for yourself so that you're not spending a ton of time doing it. And the other thing is, you don't have to do it all. Why do you have to have seven different sites if you don't want them? Um, you know, and if you're not good at it, don't do it. There's nothing that says that you have to write a blog for your business. If you're not good at writing blogs, if you hate doing it, stop doing it because it comes across in your posts. People aren't going to want to read it anyway. If you're bored to death about what you're writing, people are going to be bored to death reading it. So if you don't want to blog, don't do it. Um, if you don't like Twitter, don't be on it. There's nothing that says you have to because if you're kind of doing it half-assed, it's not going to be worth your time anyway. Um, so really kind of be conscious of, and, and plan, I mean, uh, I'm losing the word, but be specific about what you want to do and really put that energy into doing it well instead of doing five things sort of um, half-assed. Do it so that it's more, do one thing and do it really well and really enjoy doing it because it comes across that way. Um, you know, so, so remember this, when you're starting to feel overwhelmed, you really don't have to do it all. There's nothing that says that that's necessary for your business. Thoughts on that? Well, there's also, even if you don't like it, it's good enough for your business that you have to tolerate, you know. I mean, you know, there's some uses, you know. There are uses for it, but if you are tweeting once a week, you're not going to get anywhere with it. You're just not. And if all you're posting on Twitter are the links to your blog, why are you on Twitter? Well, but like in one of the other sessions, or when I visited the, the, the bar last night, somebody was pointing out that they didn't like it, but they forced themselves to do it, and it became a like it. Sure. And it became very useful and a you know, great way to expand things they never thought they would have gotten to. So there is some use to forcing. 
There is, but for I think for people, particularly in the beginning, if you're not enjoying it and you don't have a lot of time to devote to it, don't do it yet. It's not worth it to do it poorly because it, it doesn't, it, it's not showcasing your business in the way you want it to or whatever that persona is that you're trying to develop. It's not doing it any justice to do it poorly. I think, and this is my personal opinion to it, but I think you're better off not doing it at all than doing it in, ba in a bad way. So if you don't enjoy it right away, if it's not something that you can find a value in doing, st don't do it. Put your energy into what's working for you and what you like doing, and then if you want to go revisit it, go back to it. But there's no need to spin your wheels, um, you know, particularly if you're just kind of launching into, okay, I went to PodCamp and I have to do a Facebook page, I have to do a blog, and I have to set up a Twitter feed. Well, you don't have to do all three at the same time. You could space it out and try one first. See how it goes, and then kind of add them in as you're getting more comfortable with the different avenues with it and the different technologies. Yes? Uh, I, I agree with you. Just the counterpoint to that is Robert Scoble, the tech guy, he, he bitched out a bunch of French companies because they didn't see value in Twitter. And he's like, fine, you're a company. If I can't at mention you right now, you're not going to get mentioned to my billions of followers. So just that little bit of a handle. I think mean, ultimately it is. You sabotage yourself if you do a shitty job with it, if you don't truly yeah. embrace it. But the people, some people see that as a handle for your business. The thing, it is your business card. And the way to spread information yeah. and learn about you. Sure. And, and on Twitter. I mean, they're my friends. I want to promote them. And I can't because they're not on Twitter. So I have to put a link in. Have you seen my friend here? This is her site. It, it's one more step to get people to do it. And it's harder for me to promote them. But at the same time, they didn't like it, and it wasn't going to be a good business tool for them, so they shouldn't have been on there because it wasn't going to help their business in the way they wanted it to. So it goes back and forth. There is a value to being on there. I personally think it can benefit every single person. There's a way that you can find that you will like it. There's a way that you can use it to promote your business for anybody, for any business. It's on there. There's a way to do it. Um, but people get afraid of it. They don't do it. They don't like it. They can't find a way to connect into it. And sometimes it's better not to be on there than it is to kind of be on there and not, you know, to have one of the, the Twitter accounts, one of the, what, five million Twitter accounts that has one post and then they left. Uh, you know, you don't want to be that business that does that. Uh, so, you know, kind of play around with it. If you don't like it, okay, you don't have to go to it. If you do like it or if you see the value in doing it, stick with it. But, you know, again, and, and people say the same thing with blogging. Um, you know, I don't like blogging. Okay, don't do it. You don't have to do it. Just put up a landing page or redirect them to a different area um, so that you have some kind of online presentation or kind of presence, but you don't have to do it. There's nothing that says you have to do something. And particularly if it's a time constraint, you don't have time to do it, start with what you do have time for and just work your way from there and build up. Any other thoughts on any other tools that people are already using that I haven't really mentioned? one, you can access Facebook too, and LinkedIn. So you can tie in all of your different social medias and post from one place, which is, instead of having to have like six <coughs> windows up, it really does make things a lot easier. Um, so the more that you can use these tools to really kind of help manage everything in one place, it'll make it much easier. And you'll think about, wait, I just posted about this one, but I have something else that I want to post on a different one. You're more likely to add things in there and be more, you know, kind of frequent in what you're doing if you can put it all in one place and just click a button and be done. Okay. Um, if you do have any questions that you notice that we're kind of at the end of time, um, this is my contact information. 
um, because I also have five email accounts. So you're welcome to email me at any one of them. I check them at all times. Um, so if you do have questions, please say hello on Twitter. Um, I'd love to get a conversation going. If you have questions, if there are things that you would like to know about how to do certain things or what tools, please feel free to ask me. I am more than happy to help. I love answering questions and I love helping people get set up. Um, I'm pretty passionate about social media. If you couldn't tell, I love it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing all the things that I'm doing. Um, so please, if there are questions, let me know. Uh, and please introduce yourself and say hello, because I know everybody on Twitter. I don't know people in real life. So <laughs> thank you very much.